The Hoffman Show on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app and, of course, streaming live on YouTube at the Team 980, where if you're watching, you see a voice that you also get to see on TV, which is nice. NBC4's Adam Tuss is with us to discuss yet another angle to this story. And Adam, as you know, as well as anyone else, traffic and how all that's going to work is as important in D.C. as any aspect of any story, especially when you got major movement like this so for those that don't know adam covers um traffic and and commutes and and all these things uh down to you know the metro and and all that for nbc4 um so when you hear this news about monumental taking their teams from virginia or from dc to virginia and this new potomac yards metro station and uh, all the traffic on route one like where does your head go with all of this and in, in terms of how it will affect people going to these games yeah, you know, the first thing that I thought of is how is this going to work? Because if you're familiar with Route 1 at all in Northern Virginia, you know, all of us have been to Reagan National Airport. You know what it's like coming off of 395, having to go across a bridge. Uh, Route 1 here in Northern Virginia and Alexandria, it already carries about 25,000 vehicles a day through rush hours. It's pretty slammed. Uh, the lights here aren't particularly well-timed. They've been trying to build a rapid bus network down the middle of Route 1, but that has got low ridership at this point in time. Um, and really what everyone said today about this transportation plan that's going to go on here is they're putting all their hopes on one metro station. And it's the newest metro station, Potomac Yard. That is an infill station. And what that means is they basically just built this station above the tracks, right? So it's not like it was like, they dug into the ground, built this from, you know, the existing metro system. It was something that's been planned for a long time, but it's an infill station. So it doesn't necessarily have all the bells and whistles that you might need to support this kind of crush of people going at one particular point in time. I'm not saying it can't handle it. I'm just saying that normally when you design a metro station around something like this, it's got some things built into it to help help with, with massive crowds. And specifically, this particular metro station, I've, I've just taken a kind of quick look at the plans. There's like one entrance and one exit that's right next to the stadium. And if you've been to Nats Park, I mean, you know, you go up the Navy Yard and really there's there's really only one main entrance that people use there. You know what that's like. So think about like one one person who doesn't have their smart trip card, right? Or the line queues up and it's just like, right. people are getting frustrated. Those are things that are going to have to be addressed. If, if this all does pan out and you're putting all your hopes on one Metro station, those are things you have to think about when you think about like gallery place, right? When you think about where Capital One Arena is right now, one of the things that I've been thinking about with all of this is like, even if you didn't want to use gallery place, you could still use Metro Center, right? Which is a couple blocks away. You could go to uh, Mount Vernon Square and you could walk a couple of blocks. There's all these metro stations in downtown D.C. that you could eventually essentially use and then either walk or ride share or whatever you want to do here. That is not the case. It is going to be this one metro station. And if something goes wrong, you know, some track work or something happens with a train, <laughs> we're in big trouble. Wow. I that is that is intense. The Metro card thing uh, just gave me like shivers also um, because as many people know, our station is located not too far from Nats Park and my show ends at seven o'clock. I am often the fish swimming upstream and all those yeah. people coming in to, yeah. uh, to, out of that one spot for Nats Park. Uh, the fact that the Nats weren't very good this year made that a little bit easier, uh, but it's certainly a problem that I hope to have in more severity moving forward. Uh, come on, Nats, <laughs> let's rebuild this thing. Um, I also think it's pretty fascinating that they are already talking about like well, they, they would probably be like, oh, Adam, we know this. Like, that's why we're talking about expansion. But I'm also reading all these stories, including, you know, your reporting about how much trouble Metro is in right now. The, the kind of stuff that their CEO just proposed, like shutting down the tracks after 10 o'clock every night, cutting out 10 stations. How, like, how realistic is it for them to just be like, oh, yeah, don't worry about that. We'll build this thing up by the time 2028 opens or this arena opens in 2028. Yeah. Uh, Craig, let me let me let you in a little secret here. Metro says as part of this plan to close the seven hundred and fifty million dollar budget gap for next year, by the way, that's only next yes. year the gap that they have to close that you mentioned they would close the 10 lowest ridership stations. Do you know which 
which one of those stations is the 10 lowest ridership stations. I'm going to guess Potomac Yards is uh, very high on that list. Potomac Yard is one of the lowest ridership stations at this point. Now, obviously, that would change if you put an arena here. But that's a nugget that we're going to start to to pull on. Like, this is all stuff you have to think of. And in the, the transportation sources that I've been talking to about this story today, I would say we are at the very beginning of putting together a coordinated transportation plan for this area. Um, you know, I'll speak personally and just anecdotally. Like mm-hmm. FedEx Field, however you feel about it, it's hard to get to. The metro station isn't right there. It's actually like half a mile away that you have to walk to after you get off. Um, if you if this becomes a thing where it's hard to get to, that will matter. People won't want to go. And so they're going to have to figure this out really quickly. I've been talking to a lot of people today who are like, yeah, we don't like there's not like a plan to build some sort of secret highway into here. There is plans for like an underground parking garage. um, And there are plans to kind of retime some of the traffic signals along Route 1. But if this turns into a thing where it's really hard to get to, then you have that feeling of and, and again, however you feel about FedEx, there are people who feel like it's just really hard to get to. And that's why they don't want to go there. Everyone feels like that about FedEx. <laughs> Even people that are like, ah, it's not that yeah, bad. Like, trying to be kind. I'm trying yeah, to. Yeah, it's yeah. it sucks. I go there when there's no traffic after because we I do the pregame show and like it still sucks to get there when I get to drive right in. Um, and you know, there's roads closed down and they have to reorganize traffic and everything. And yeah, I don't know. It's uh it's definitely a less, I mean, there obviously are like neighborhoods and stuff around, but um, I think it's a little bit different than some of the the brand new stuff that's just been built over in Alexandria. Yeah. And Again, let, me, let me say, yeah, really go ahead. You mentioned neighborhoods. Well, here in uh, in Alexandria, where this is all being built, I mean, people who are who are familiar with this area, you know, there's the Target, there's the Old Navy, and the Michael the Target, which, by the way, is going to survive according to the plants. Well, it should. It's like I think it's like <laughs> one of the grossing targets, like in the whole Target <laughs> brand. So how do you just yeah. lose that? Um, but there are really when you talk about neighborhoods this is going to be so interesting because they tried this here before, right? Like Jack Kent cook tried to build a stadium here before and the residents here basically defeated that plan. Well, there are like two neighborhood roads that connect to route one and three ninety five here. And that's it. So where do you think all the traffic is going to come from, from the highway? It's going to go right through these people's front yards. Um, and the, the community here is pretty vocal about, you know, what they want, what they don't want. Um, while all of this seems like it's a done deal, The more and more that I peel back layers of this, there are so many questions that have to be answered about how this is going to work. I'm not saying it it can't work. I'm just saying there's a lot of questions that have to be worked. You know, Virginia just lost the FBI, right? So they're going to Greenbelt. That was a big story. Um, These are also political wins for people to be able to pull some of this stuff away. And there's tons of politics behind this right now. Yeah, definitely. Adam Tuss is with us, covers transportation for NBC4. Um, one of the things that I am intrigued by that I kind of think is just on a pure geographic sense, a little bit of overreaction is like the amount of DC and Maryland folks that are unwilling to go to Virginia. And, um, as a millennial who has Instagram, I always do laugh at all of the memes. It's like, Oh, you got to get your passport. Oh, I'm dating a guy. He's so far away. He's in (laughs) Arlington. It's like, ah, you have to cross the river. But it also, I also have been around this area since 2015, and I know it's real, even though I'm someone, because of the nature of my work, who travels all over the DMV, although I probably got nothing on you. That is literally part of your job is to travel yeah. all over the DMV. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of Virginia folks that won't go to Maryland, Maryland folks that won't go to Virginia, DC folks that are like, it's outside those boundary stones we just learned about thanks to the Wizards jerseys. I'm not going there. So <laughs> when you look at, like, the movement of people, and, and do you think that the, the crowds itself will be heavily affected um, and you might have to, we might have to go back and study the historical precedent of when the team moved from RFK to, to FedEx for this, yeah. but kind of that idea of we're talking about different groups of people that live different lives, all if they're in the same region and, or is it all overridden by the fact that if you're a basketball fan, you're going to go, if you're a hockey fan, you're going to go. Well, I hear, I heard an interesting comment actually on your station today. Um, I forget who said it, but, uh, to use the old cliche, they said, if you build it, they will come right. Like, so mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I I mean, the territorial aspects that you're talking about are very real. We all know that in the DMV. Uh, Maryland and Virginia, I would say, probably have the two biggest beefs with one another. And, uh, you know, everyone kind of shares the district or whatever. And D.C. people just don't want to go anywhere. So that's (laughs) which is fine. But I think ultimately, I mean, it comes down to them putting a good product out there. Right. 
Like what have the yeah. wizards what what have the wizards been? They've been abysmal. Like who and so like are you giving people a reason to travel to watch that? I mean the Capitals, I would say, well the Capitals are basically already here, right? They they practice in Arlington. So they already have a footprint in Northern Virginia. Um, so I think that, you know, just from what I see, I live in Northern Virginia. So I, I know that there's a lot of Capitals fans around here to see if you would now gain this new fan base of Wizards fans who previously might not have wanted to go into the city. I think that would be interesting too. But what does it mean for someone, you know, from Rockville? Do they want to come all the way down here? Because you're taking that ride on the Metro. That's, you know, that's a long way to get down here. If we got time for one more, I got one more on that yeah, front. Yeah, go for it. So the, you have undoubtedly studied, I'm making an assumption here, but undoubtedly as someone who covers transportation, you've studied how traffic uh, has changed since the pandemic. Yep. And I think so much of this is, is happening because of the change of downtown DC due to the pandemic. And so, you know, we had on the show earlier today, an economics professor who talked about, there's not really like, because hybrid work and everything is so new, it's hard to know if the model of putting that was really started with Camden Yards in 1992 of putting a stadium in a business district with the idea that people would go after work is dead because hybrid work is so new. As someone who's looked at these traffic patterns and looked at how people move around throughout their days, do you have any thoughts on on that element that maybe a suburban stadium is a better idea now than it would have been in 2019? Well, I think you've seen it in the district itself, right? I think that there are all these other contributing factors that are bleeding into this. And, you know, I mean, you might say whatever you want about crime. There is that perception that said some parts of Gallery Place have gotten unsafe. A lot of that is because our federal workforce isn't going back at, at the full capacity and full tilt um, that they once were. You know, Metro ridership is still about half of what it was pre-pandemic. They're down wow. to thousands of trips per day. Um, I will say traffic itself in terms of vehicular traffic, that seems to be coming back. But now it seems to be spread out over the entire in other words, you know, you might have a lot more people working remotely who are going to run errands or picking up kids or doing any of that kind of stuff. Um, I, I've seen studies that our region, the DMV and San Francisco, were the two biggest telework communities in the entire country. And that really has stuck. So maybe there is a case to say, you know, a suburban model, a suburban, uh, a suburban uh, stadium works here um, because people don't have the same commuting patterns. And I can say for sure you know, the federal government hasn't been called back to go back to their offices full time yet. So that pattern, that travel pattern that we were all used to pre pandemic, it has not it has not come back to the way that it was before. Um, so there might be something to suggest that 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 would work here. But realistically, I mean, I covered when they had to retrofit Navy Yard in the metro station there, which I mean, you probably remember what Navy Yard used to look like before the ballpark was there. You know, it was a ghost town. Yeah. Um, you know, I covered when they had to retrofit that station because of the crush of people that they were expecting here. We won't know how all of this works until it goes into effect. But uh, I will say this, they better come up with some good plans because as it is right now, this will not work. Very well put. Uh, Adam Tuss, NBC4, covers transportation. The Metro ridership thing is crazy to me. And I think also is a huge factor here because yeah. it was so easy to get to gallery place and yeah. capital one by metro so, i mean still is and will be till 2028 but yeah. i guess you go there starting in 2028 it's <laughs> not gonna be a game to watch uh adam thanks so much uh we look forward to your reporting uh on this uh, throughout the next couple of days yeah. weeks and probably months that sounds like yeah and a lot of reporting coming up on nbc4 tonight plug for our, our station there we go yes of course of course uh keep watching that nbc4 and uh you know if you, uh, the reporting uh, from earlier in the day as well nbc4.com adam thank you thanks this is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.